Hello and welcome to Legal Forum. I'm your host, David Hagen. Normally we shoot this show in a studio with a couple of guests and talk about a particular topic. But today we have a very special edition of Legal Forum for you. Today we're going to take a tour of the brand new Chatsworth Courthouse. We're going to look at the filing window, we're going to look at the lobby, they're going to point out all the art to us. We're going to go to the jury assembly room. We're going to go into the courtroom and look at the specific elements in the courtroom. And then at the end, they're also going to let us into the judge's chamber to sit down and talk with the Superior Court judge. We're going to have special guests all the way along. So stick with us today on this special edition of Legal Forum. Let's start our tour appropriately enough at the front door of the courthouse. So, come on in. Here we go, come on in. All right, here we are in the lobby of the facility. Take a look at this unbelievably beautiful lobby. Three floors, security, beautiful architectural elements. All right, here we are in the lobby of the new Chatsworth Courthouse, and I'd like to introduce you to our first guest. I'd like to introduce you to Michelle Cramden, who is the trial court administrator. Michelle, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here on this Saturday morning. Well, tell me, trial court administrator, what does that mean? What do you do? I basically oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the courthouse. And you're the manager, I suppose, of the Yes. Interesting. What, uh, what kind of cases are heard here at the courthouse? We handle all types of limited jurisdiction cases. That includes uh, criminal misdemeanors specifically, traffic citations, uh, civil filings uh, where the complaint amounts are $25,000 or less, as well as small claims filings. Is that the full range of matters that are heard in the courts? Actually, it's about half. We do not handle general jurisdiction matters at all, meaning that we do not handle felonies for the most part unless on assignment, that means as needed. Um, we don't handle family law. We also don't handle any juvenile here. How many uh, courtrooms are in this facility? We have built out 10, but we are presently using eight. We have four commissioners and four judges assigned to those courtrooms. Now, the lobby's kind of quiet today because it's a Saturday, but what does a typical day here at the lobby of the courthouse look like? Well, the Sheriff Department tells me that we uh, see anywhere from 1,400 to 1,500 people on a typical day coming through the front doors. It's a lot of traffic. Yeah, it is. I understand that artwork is an important part of this new facility and that the first important piece of artwork is here in the lobby. Could you tell us about it? Yes, I sure can. It's actually a three-piece, um, a three-part piece of artwork uh, by an artist named Michael Davis. It is called We the People, and you'll see here in the lobby the we portion of that. Um, it is uh, made with a bronze finish to look like a copper penny. Those are, uh, those are pretty big letters. How big are those? I have no idea. You've never been up there? No. And they must be, what, six, eight, ten foot tall? It is. Phenomenal. All right, well, let's move on. Well, Michelle, we came into the lobby here, and I noticed we just took security. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, all persons entering the building are required to pass the weapons screening, and if they set it off as we just did, the security officers would check us out. Every single person who comes into the courtroom has to pass security. Absolutely, yes. Right. Let's move on. Okay. Here we are in the atrium now. We, we've come past the court clerk's office and we're standing next to the sheriff's office and we're in the middle of the atrium of this beautiful building. Uh, Michelle, tell us a little bit about the artwork in the atrium. Okay. You'll see actually the second and third part of the three piece, uh, that, we, the three piece that we were introduced to in the lobby area, the We the People piece. Um, but you'll see here in the three black and white granite benches and the people are represented by photo collages. There are actually two, one here, one further back. The photos are of both members of the public as well as court employees. They're mixed in. And those photos were taken at the San Fernando Courthouse while this building was still under construction. And you'll see that the collages are placed behind the scales of justice. Now the thing I like about this part is that it has a functional purpose as well. That the public can actually come in and sit down on it. Yes, they can. Let them interact with the art, so to speak. It's a great idea. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Let's uh, move on to the jury assembly room. Okay. We're 
We're now in the jury assembly room. Michelle, tell us a little bit about what goes on here. Okay, this is the room where every potential juror starts his or her day. Um, they start out here, they receive their orientation from one of the jury clerks, and this is where they spend their day until such time that a courtroom calls them for potential service. It's kind of nice, it's got a lot of features. Tell us about some of the features of this room. Okay, we've added um, internet hookups along the wall here so jurors can bring in their laptop computers and be productive, get some work done while they're here, while they're away from their office. We also have televisions throughout the room so they can watch TV, magazine racks that are full, they can read while they wait. We're also hoping to install a speaker system next door in the cafeteria so jurors have an option as to where they spend their time if they do in fact have to wait. They can receive their jury instructions from the clerks from this room audibly next door. Mm -hmm. I also see that there's a, a sink, a microwave, uh, refrigerators. Yes. It looks to me like the court has really gone out of its way to try and make this as convenient and comfortable as it possibly can be. We, we try to do that, absolutely. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Now, Artwork being such an element or important element in the courthouse. I understand there's also some artwork here in the jury assembly room and here it's outside in the patio. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the artwork there on the patio. Sure. That's the second of our two pieces. This is called The Tree of Life by artist Michael Amescua. And you'll see it's representative of California's landscape. You'll see oak trees, palm trees, as well as elements of the mountains and the ocean. And it was specifically placed outside the jury assembly room to enhance the view for the jurors as well as from the outside to welcome the public as they approach the courthouse. Well, I tell you what, let's move now move on to the courtroom, meet the side judge and look at what goes on there. All right, now we're going into one of the actual courtrooms, so come on inside. Thank you. Looks like everybody's here. Come on. All right, I'd like to introduce you to one of our other guests, who is Irene Mack. She is a private family law attorney who's done a number of trials and jury trials. So, Irene, welcome to our show, and thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me today. We are kind of casual today because it's Saturday morning. We're in shirts and, and pants. Uh, this isn't normal courtroom attire. Tell us a little bit about what should be worn on a normal courtroom day. Yeah, normally when you come into a court, the court is a branch of the government, so we have to enter the courtroom with respect and dignity. You can come in here with tank tops, and the judge doesn't like that, and no shorts either. And um, you have to dress appropriately. For attorneys, they have to wear a coat and tie, and maybe a suit. And then for litigants that walk into the courtroom, they should really dress as if they were going to work, like something like a shirt. They don't have to wear three-piece suit, but they will have to wear long pants, no tank tops, no no shorts. So if a party's coming in to be a litigant in a in a matter, they really shouldn't be too casual. That's correct. <laughs> okay, thanks. What about this, this courtroom? This is, this is a beautiful courtroom, and I know you've been to a lot of courtrooms in Los Angeles. How does this rate with all of the other courthouses? This is the state of the art courtroom that I have seen, and I'm so impressed with the way it is laid out. And um, let's go around and introduce all the different areas. All right, let's take courtroom. a look at that. First of all, I see there's a whole bunch of seats out there. Who gets to sit there? Most of the trials and hearings are open to the public and if you come in as an audience, that is the area where all the audience sit. And anybody can come in? Anybody can come in. Irene, I see television shows where a fracas will break out in the courtroom. Uh, tell me, do you see that very often and, and what's appropriate courtroom behavior? Well, the appropriate courtroom behavior is when you come into the courtroom, when the court is in session, you should not be talking, and there is no eating or drinking in the courtroom. And also, in addition, there is no gum chewing, because that is really annoying to the bailiff, and uh, uh, the judge and the bailiff will not like that. And also, when you come, come into the courtroom, you want to make sure you turn off your cell phone, and you want to turn off your pager because those are uh, disruption to the court and those behavior will not be tolerated. Well, I've seen the uh, cell phones go off before and that uh, really irritates the court, I know. That is correct. What about this big long table here? What's that about? This 
table is what we call the council table. And you see those chairs that are in front of the table? Usually the plaintiff will sit at that chair and the plaintiff's attorney will sit in this chair. And this is where the defendant will sit and the defendant's attorney will sit at that chair. Now tell me this, because this always confused me before I went to law school. Plaintiff is the person being sued? No, plaintiff is the person that's bringing the lawsuit. So I'm still confused. The plaintiff is the person suing and the defendant is the person being sued. That is correct. Got it. And everyone has their own seat at the at council table. Exactly. So that way uh, we won't get confused. Got it. And who's the gentleman sitting back here looking very official? The gentleman sitting over there is the bailiff. And he is the bailiff assigned to this courtroom. And the bailiff's job is to keep order. And the bailiff um, oversees everybody that walks into the courtroom to make sure that everybody is safe here. Every courtroom in Los Angeles has a bailiff? That's correct. Okay. Now, just to our left of the bailiff, I see a big, strong, reinforced door. What's that about? That is where they bring in the prisoner. Uh, for the hearing. Not in a civil matter. No, not in a civil matter. In a criminal matter? In a criminal, in a criminal matter. Okay. And for our viewing audience, we wanted to take our tour past that door into lockup, but the court officials told us that we absolutely could not film in lockup. There actually is a holding facility in this building where people who have been accused of a crime await their time in trial, and they wouldn't let us film any of that for security purposes. So just looking at the door will have to suffice for purposes of the show. Let's, let's move on. What, what do we have here, this desk? Over here at this desk, it's the clerk's desk. The clerk is basically the assistant to the judge in this courtroom. And the clerk keeps records of everything that goes on in this courtroom. And basically, the clerk is the bridge between the litigant and the attorney and the judge. So we have to be very, very nice to, to the clerk if we want to have any kind of message to the judge. You want to be nice to the power behind the throne, so to speak. Absolutely. Okay. And moving across the courtroom, let's look over here. This is the, the high point of the, of the courtroom or in terms of elevation. What's this about? That seat over there is where the judge sits. And the judge sits right there and he oversees everything that goes on in the courtroom. So the, the bailiff is the, the person who is ensuring order, but the judge is the person that's really coordinating the entire proceeding. And he's basically the boss. The boss. Okay. Moving further over, what's, who sits right there? Over there is the witness stand. For anybody who needs to testify on a case, that's where the witness will testify. And right before the witness testifies, the witness will get sworn in, and then the witness will take his or her seat, and uh, the witness will sit there and testify. Well, who sits in front of the witness then? Over there, it's where the court reporter sits. And the court reporter has a machine in front of her, and she types down everything that the judge says. She, she or he types down everything that the witness or the attorney says. And I know that uh, they have one of those machines that they type on, a court reporter's machine. They still use that? Yes, that's correct. They do that. Okay. Now, I noticed that um, the arrangement of this room is a little bit different than perhaps the courtrooms I've seen on TV. Normally, the judge is right in the middle, way up on a big pedestal. Why is this courtroom a little bit different? Well, basically, the design is the state-of-the-art design in this courtroom, and the judge wants to come down to the level where everybody is, so that's why he is not right in the middle and on top of everyone. Instead, his, the design for his chair is a little bit lower, and also, he is not in the middle because with the way it's designed, the judge can look at the witness, the judge can look at the juror, this way, if the judge was in the middle, then he or she will have to keep turning his or her head to the witness um, to watch the witness as to the demeanor, as to what the witness is saying. The way it is designed, the judge is over there uh, in the corner. He can oversee what the witness is saying and the witness demeanor as well as what, what the jurors are observing. 
and also with the way it is designed, the jurors can look directly into the judge as well as into the witness. So this is a more efficient way of designing the courtroom, and it is more user friendly. Now I understand that there's a there's a well in this courtroom. What's that about? Well, the well it's a protected area that nobody can enter. And this is the area that's designed to protect the judge, the witness, the jurors, everybody that's involved in the process. Now what happens if somebody walks into the well? The bailiff will not be very happy. Is that right, Mr. Bailiff? That's correct. Okay. Now where, where's the well? The well is anywhere you see um, in front of the council table, all the way up to where the judge is. So basically we're standing in the well? That is correct. Good thing court isn't in session today, right Mr. Vela? Right. Okay. Now finally, the last element is the jury box. Tell me about that. Okay. That those um, chairs that you see over there are where the jurors sit. And um, can you count how many chairs there are? Well, you know, I was I was counting before and there's 14, but I thought that there were there were 12 jurors. What's that about? Well, the, the extra two chairs are for alternates. For whatever reason, one of the 12 jurors uh, is not going to be able to continue with the process. Then the alternate will come in and the alternate will take, take the seats of uh, one of the jurors. Where did the jurors go in and out of the courtroom? And you see that door over there? That's okay. where the jurors come in and out of the courtroom. And then going back to talking about the judge, where does the judge come in and out? With, with everybody else, the audience? No, the judge comes out from a special door. You see where the judge's chair is? The judge comes out from the door behind that chair. So he's almost got a, a hidden entrance and exit to the courtroom. That's right. And that goes to where? That goes to the judge's chamber, which is the office where the judge works when he's not inside the courtroom. Fascinating. Well, this is very, very interesting. Um, Irene, thank you for giving us this tour of the courtroom. Uh, we appreciate it an awful lot. Um, thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. thank you. All right, now we're going to uh, go and meet the judge. I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing right now. And in fact, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty uncomfortable. I'm standing in the well. Not only am I standing in the well, I'm leaning on the court's bench. Something I would never do when court is in session. But the judge has given me special permission for purposes of the show here this morning. Now, we're gonna have the judge come out in just a minute, but before we do, I want to explain the etiquette in terms of addressing a judge. When court is not in session, he is referred to as judge. When court is in session, it's always your honor. So we want to make sure that our etiquette is proper. Even though we're in a courtroom here, it's not in session. So you hear me refer to him as judge. So now that we've got that taken care of, let's have the honorable, actually judge, Michael Knight come out. Good morning. Judge, thank you for being with us this morning. And welcome to my court. Now I understand that you're the site judge here. What does that mean? Well, the site judge is the judge that supervises the court courthouse. Uh, in other courts they call them supervising judges, but here I would be responsible for uh, this whole courthouse basically. So not only are you the boss of this courtroom, but you are the boss of this series of courtrooms in this building. That's correct. Tell us a little bit about your courtroom here. Well, in, in my court, which is generally a civil court, we handle generally civil cases, but sometimes we handle criminal cases, unlawful detainers, small claims, small claims appeals, motions, that sort of thing. Do you like being a judge? Yes, it's a privilege to be able to serve the people. Now, I understand that you have given us permission to go into your chambers and chat for a few minutes. We're still going to go in and do that? We're going to go into chambers and chat. Uh, you should keep in mind that, this, that the courtroom here is for resolving disputes among people. And, and uh, we try to do that in a fair and even-handed way so that everybody who comes here feels like they've been treated fairly. Because that's what the whole system is about. The system of justice is making sure and ensuring that everybody's rights are protected. And that's what this courtroom is for, for that very purpose. Before we go to Chambers then, I want to thank you for letting me stand in your well here today. I, I appreciate the opportunity. And maybe you'll stand in my well some other time. Thank you, Your Honor. Let's go into Chambers. We've stopped off in the jury room on the way to Chambers to take a look at uh, what goes on in here. 
Judge, this looks kind of plain compared to the rest of the courthouse. Tell us about that. Well, it's, it's meant to be plain. The idea is the jurors are going to come in here, they're going to look at all the evidence they have in their case, discuss the case without being uh, interfered with in any way by distractions such as paintings or whatever. The point is, they've got a job to do, and the job is to examine the evidence and reach a decision based solely on the evidence and not on some distractions that might be in the uh, jury room. Now, I know that the court's got a very uh, strong opinion in terms of jury duty. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, jury duty is a very important part of our system. Uh, we have young people all over the world, men and women carrying guns and putting their lives on the line so that the rest of us continue, can continue with this form of government. And they, they fully expect when they come back here that the government will be in place and all of their rights and privileges will still be there. And one of the things you can do is do your jury service and vote. Those are two things that we ask you to do because those things will continue with the form of government that we have. And it's really a great form of government. Now, what happens, though, if they don't show up there? Well, there's a downside. And the downside is they can be held in contempt, and they could be fined up to $1,500 for failure to respond to a jury summons. So that's kind of a, a little impetus for them to get off the dime and come on in and do your jury service and be part of your government. So I suppose the word is, if you get that summons in the jury for a jury summons, show up because it's the right thing to do. and. If you're not going to show up because it's the right thing to do, show up because you could be made to show up and fine. That's correct. That Very good. Correct. Very good. Let's let's move on to uh, your chambers. All right, thank you. This is where we are when we're not out there on the bench. And this is where we conduct a lot of business, believe it or not. We bring the litigants and sometimes the uh, attorneys in, in, either into chambers or into one of the conference rooms, and we sit and discuss the case because... It's really important uh, that we understand we cannot trial the cases that we have. Just in the one courtroom that I am in, we have 2,300 cases pending. That's our inventory at this time. So it would be impossible to trial those cases. So it's important to try to settle as many cases as we can. Uh, during the process, uh, what we do is uh, we send the cases to mediation or arbitration. Now, those cases that aren't settled at mediation or arbitration have to come back to the court. When they do come back to the court, we try to set a mandatory settlement conference, and that's where the court meets with the attorneys and says, okay, let's sit down and talk. Let's talk about your case, your, the strengths, the weaknesses of your case, and let's see if we can resolve it. And a lot of that is done right here in the chambers. It seems like you spend a lot of your effort then on settlement. What, is there a certain portion of your day or your energy that's spent towards settlement? Well, I, I, probably we spend more time on settling cases than we do uh, trying them because of this, the, the vol volume of cases and, and, and the bulk of our cases have to be settled or we're not going to be able to conduct business. So a lot of time is spent trying to resolve the cases. So we bring them in here and we, I give them some candy and try to sweeten it up a little bit and see if we can't get them to talk about their case and resolve their case. And, of course, this is where we prepare the next day's cases. We read the cases and the motions that we have on the next day's calendar. A lot of our work outside the court was done right here. So uh, would, would this then be the desk where you make most of your decisions? Uh, quite a few. I mean, a lot of decisions involving motions, that sort of thing, are made right here in chambers. Although some decisions are made right on the bench, because at the time the motion or whatever the ruling is, uh, the court has heard that kind of a motion before, knows the law on the area, and then makes the ruling right there on the bench. But yes, a lot of, a lot of uh, decisions are made right in here. You spend the majority of your day here, probably. Well, it, it depends. Uh, some weeks I'm in trial, back-to-back -back on jury trials, and uh, so I don't spend any time in here. I'm out there in the court all day long. Other times, uh, the case is settled. And when that happens, then I end up back here preparing other cases. Yes, but it, but it, it really depends on whether the, uh, there are a lot of trials on calendar for a particular day and whether they actually do go to trial and I'm unable to settle them. So I'm looking at this, at your chambers, and I'm, I'm realizing that it's really... Just an office. Your office. That's right. It's just an office. That's all it is. We do have uh, uh, the ability on our computers to bring up... Uh, cases that we need to, and we have the ability to do a lot of work back in here that we wouldn't do out on the bench. But it's just, it's an office is basically what it is, yes. Judge, I've, I've really enjoyed being in your courtroom. 
and especially enjoyed having the opportunity to sit here with you uh, in chambers and, and talk about uh, what goes on in the Superior Court and specifically what you do. Thank you very much for allowing us access. To You're more us. than welcome. You're welcome to come back anytime. Thank you. Well, there you have it. From front lobby to judges' chambers, the beautiful new Chatsworth Superior Courthouse. I'd like to thank our guest today, Court Administrator Michelle Cramden, Private Attorney Irene Mack, and of course, Superior Court Judge Michael Knight. This program is sponsored by the Lawyer Referral Service of the San Fernando Valley Bar Association with the hopes that this will demystify a bit the judicial process and how people can become involved perhaps more in that process. Until next time, this is your host, David Hagan, for Legal Forum.